next strum pattern, which is our down up strum pattern. Um, and the second strum pattern that we're going to do in 4 4 time, we had a straight down strum pattern last week, now we're doing the down up strum pattern. It's an example of two measures as written in our weekly chord drills. You can see E minor to D. And now we're going to use the up strum with the up arrow. So when we count this, we're going to actually, it's going to be kind of half time what we had before. So we've got count one and two and three and four and, and that's how we're going to play the rhythm at a regular pace and strumming down with each number and up with the and. Okay? So you can see it right there to count one and two and three and four and. And I'm going to play it as it's written. It's going to be E minor to D. And I'll play it like this. One, two, ready, play. One and two and three and four and. And I can do the second measure, which is D. One and two and three and four and like that. Now, on this, it's going to be it's going to be new and different. We're doing an upstrum, and that kind of adds more complexity to our rhythms. So, one thing that we might do is tap our foot. And when we tap our foot, it helps us keep our strum consistent on a tempo that works. Um, so we want to um, we want to use our foot and our strumming arm, and they should stay in sync in sync like a pendulum. So if you've ever seen a pendulum where it goes back and forth. Um, you can do it, it's a grandfather clock might have one or um, even a metronome, an older metronome might have one where it goes tick tock, tick tock, and it's on the tempo. So it's the same kind of thing with our arm. We want it to be a pendulum where it does not stop. It just kind of goes back, forth, back, forth. The whole time, um, regardless of whether um, we cut out strums, which, we're, which is what we're gonna do in the future. We're gonna cut out some of those those upbeats, cut out some of those down strums. Um, so we'll do that in the future, but right now we want to get used to the concept of strumming and tapping with our foot at the same time. So if I was going to tap with my foot, I would just tap, um, I would tap with my foot going up when my arm is going up, and I'd tap with my foot going down when my arm's going down. So I can watch my foot and mimic my foot as I'm playing. So it's going to be one and two and three and four and, and that's an important thing to do in the beginning. Um, so I would just suggest that you consider that as you learn it, as you're learning the strum patterns. Okay. That'll help you isolate each strum and go a little bit slower and n make sure that your arm does not stop in the middle of the pattern. Okay. So we'll come back to that in week four, cause that's when we'll add these, we'll miss it. We'll skip out some up strums and um, we won't be playing the full chord, but we won't be playing the full rhythm um, like it is here uh, where we play all of the beats. But let's, uh, let's practice this one with full C. You can see on page 17, we have uh, the full C chord, which basically means we play five strings now instead of four. We had um, an X on the sixth and the fifth string, but now we're actually gonna play the fifth string. Um, so we'll play that with our third finger. So we had our C, our, our four string C looks like this. First finger on the second string, first fret, second finger on the fourth string, second fret, and we play our third finger on the fifth string, third fret. And now we're gonna play the five strings instead of the four, like that. So it's gonna sound a little bit fuller. It's not gonna sound much different than the, than the four string C. Um, but one thing that you'll see now is that when we do strum patterns or songs or whatever it, mi it might be that we're gonna do in the future, we aren't going to go back to the four string C. We're going to always play the regular C. Okay. So that's important to know. Don't play the four string C anymore. Even if you go back and learn, look at the chord again, just play the full. If you go back and look at the four string C, like in the week one or two that we had it, um, just play the full C from now on. Okay. So let's play that together. And we're going to play the, let's play the waltz strum pattern, the one and the one, two, three, two, two, three, like that. Remember to emphasize the first down strum and to play softer on the two and the three. So let's play full C, first finger on the second string, first fret, second finger on the fourth string, second fret, third finger on the fifth string, third fret. Let's play that together. Make sure your thumb is on the back middle of the guitar, your wrist is broken, your fingers are perpendicular to the strings. And we have a little nice mouse hole here, okay? So let's play the full C. One, two, ready, play. Ah. I gotta play, I gotta count you one, two, three. So I'm gonna count one, two, three. See, you got me. Um, one, two, three, not, not four, four time, three, four time. So we'll play one, two, three, strum, two, three, two, two, three. Fuller on the first beat, softer on the second and third. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, 
we're gonna actually go ahead and play this next chord, A minor, because what we're doing here is we can leave the first finger and second finger down where it is, and we can add our third finger, just moving our third finger to the third string, second fret. So let's try and do that together. We'll switch the C to A minor after this next measure. So one, two, three, and change one. Okay, so there's our A minor. What we did was we just moved our third finger from the fifth string to the third string in the second fret. So see that position, how you can leave your first and second finger down and you have a brace there and you can keep that C together. So we can just switch back and forth from C to A minor if we need to. Um, and that'll happen a lot because C and A minor go together in a lot of songs. So um, let's practice the new chord A minor um, and we'll go back to C in a little bit, practicing switching between the two. So let's do A minor first. And we're actually gonna play the bottom five strings, open on the fifth string and the first string. The sixth string is X'd off, meaning it's closed. Okay, so let's play A minor. One, and we'll do waltz drum pattern again. So three, four time, one, two, three. One, two, three. Two, two, three. Three, two, three. Four, switch into C. One, two, three. And we just move our third finger to the fifth string, leaving the first and second fingers down the whole time. Those are our braces, our first and second finger. One, two, three. One, two, three. Last time, back to A minor. Two, three, and switch. Two, three, switch. No, we're not switching. We're still playing. One, two, three, two, two, three, two, three, four, two, three, and end on C. Like that. Play that once for me if you haven't played it yet. So go ahead and play that C, and we'll stop. Um, and then we'll do the down up strum pattern. Um, Let's go ahead and go to the next page and we'll we'll look at the strum patterns here. Um, and and we'll do the down strum pattern on the next page. Okay? So